Hey, Jason. Steve we meet back. again. Hey. All right. Well, it is episode seven of Future Now. We skipped last week because we were busy with actual work. <laughs> well, that, that being said, it is a lot of work for you to prep these episodes, and uh, I appreciate it for one. Anyway, our topic today is customer loyalty, which is kind of a weird thing because it this is another situation where what people say they want or want to do are, is not what they're actually doing. And although everybody kind of just by default thinks customer loyalty is good and something we should be shooting for, I think we might be surprised at what we hear and see today, huh, Stephen? So I'm eager to hear this story about the pudding guy. I understand that this is a true story. It sounds intriguing. Tell us about the pudding guy. Okay. So before I read this story, um, which, is a, which is a true story, I want people to be thinking is how much loyalty was displayed by the quote-unquote pudding guy. Okay. So the, this guy named David Phillips, also known as the pudding guy, made headlines in the Wall Street Journal by taking advantage of a loyalty program and promotion put together by the Healthy Choice Foods. And he earned over mm -hmm. 1.2 million frequent flyer miles in 1999. So here's how it went down. While grocery shopping, Dave Phillips calculated that the value of a, of a mail-in promotion for frequent flyer points exceeded the sale price of the pudding on which it was offered. So he visited a number of Sacramento area grocery stores where the individual pudding packages sold for 25 cents a piece and he bought every case of pudding available. A total of 1,200, 150 individual servings of pudding at a cost of $3,140. And he asked the, the local area grocery store managers to order additional cases of the pudding, which he then purchased. So Dave Phillips was unable to remove all the UPC barcodes from the pudding packages in time for the, the period of the promotion when the airline mileage would be doubled for every 10 UPC barcodes submitted. And the 35-year-old Phillips sought help from a local Salvation Army branch to peel off the UPC barcodes from the pudding containers. And in exchange for their help, Dave Phillips donated the pudding to the Salvation Army, which allowed him a charitable donation deduction from his taxes of $815. Hmm. So Phillips received 1,253,000 frequent flyer miles from Healthy Choice Foods in May of 1999 for submitting the proof of purchase required for the loyalty program. And he applied miles to four different airlines, including American Airlines, which earned him lifetime gold status with that carrier. Phillips later reached platinum status with American Airlines by taking advantage of other frequent flyer promotions. Since 2000, the year 2000, Dave Phillips has earned frequent flyer miles at a rate five times faster than he can redeem. Them. And due to the small price paid to the airline, by the parent company of Healthy Choice and the value from the publicity they received, the brand wasn't put at a disadvantage. So you may be familiar with the pudding story as it was recreated as a subplot in the American romantic comedy drama feature film called Punch Drunk Love, which starred Adam Sandler and Emily Watson in 2002. So again, how much loyalty was demonstrated by Dave Phillips in this story that I just shared? Yeah, wow, there wasn't any there, was there? So, yes, the, wow, the answer where do we... Zero, as in none. Right. He found a way to... To exploit the system. Quite legally, quite <laughs> ethically. Yeah. He found the loophole. He took advantage of it. Right. So, there's a program that created no loyalty whatsoever. Yeah, heavy discounting. And what are, where did it take the, the seller, right? Or did it take the company that put it on? Nowhere. Uh, so, so what are some current trends then about customer loyalty that you're seeing? Well, if you can picture a plane in a nosedive going down rapidly, the, <laughs> the ground is getting closer and closer through the windshield. That's the kind of rapid decline we're seeing with, with customer loyalty in North America. And the number one reason for that is the company's inability to, to meet the increased expectations of consumers. That's the top reason 
for consumers in a relationship with a brand. The company doesn't deliver. And the second highest reason for consumers to end the relationship with the brand is over promotion by the brand. Just constantly right. receiving email after email from the company, which wears people out. It's annoying. You know, just because you have their contact information because they joined a loyalty program doesn't mean they want to hear from you every every 20 minutes. And I'm laughing because I'm thinking of the the little bit you do about cake. More mm. cake. <laughs> Buy some cake. How about more how about more cake? I always like that. It puts me in a good mood. So frequent interactions initiated by the brands only result in customers becoming loyal 13% of the time. Not a great conversion on. And the third reason why there's this nosedive and this rapid decline of consumer loyalty is just the multiple number of choices that we have or as consumers to buy most anything, products, services. It's so easy for consumers to shop around and compare prices and get the best deal. Boy, a uh, personal example, getting a camera or a lens or something like that. I, I have no real loyalty. I do to brands. Mm -hmm. But uh, but not where you, you know. Buy I mean, it. there's a, there's a reason why I'm getting a Sony or I'm getting a Canon product or something like that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, one horrible thing that I will often do is I will find the product on Amazon and read all the reviews and then go get it on eBay. I I do this all the time because but, I mean, that's once, horrible. Once, yeah, that's not yeah, horrible. Well, it, yeah, it's, I feel kind of bad about it because I'm I'm using the information that the Amazon sellers have compiled together, right? On, on Amazon's platform to help me make my decision, but I'm not rewarding anyone there for doing that. Um, you know, I still buy a lot of stuff through Amazon Prime and that, so I guess that makes up for it, but, but it is a frequent thing that I do. I am, I am uh, I don't know, seller agnostic, I guess. As long as I know that the same product is going to be delivered and it's not some cheap knockoff or something like that, I'll go do it. Again, I mean, that's not illegal. It's not unethical. No. You may feel a pang of, of guilt, but the money you save is better in your pocket than in Jeff Bezos's pocket. Yes, sure. Sure. We could, <laughs> we could definitely look at it that way. So when it comes to making a big purchase, what are consumers doing? How, how long are they spending doing research and collecting information? And that On average, uh, for big purchases, they spend 63 days doing research and collecting information so they can make informed buying decisions. And on average, 85% of that research is done online and 70% of the research is conducted actually in store. Hmm. To what you said about shopping on Amazon or, or doing research on Amazon and then buying elsewhere. You know, that's a real common thing people do in stores right, right in front of the, the retail person that's helping them, the salesperson mm -hmm. or, or whomever it's called showrooming. And, you know, right. they get all the information, they pick the brain of the person about the product and right in front of them, you know, they pull it up on Amazon or do a search to find the cheapest place to, to get that item. Yep. And they buy it right there from their from their phone, from their smartphone. Yep. I can't remember if it's Staples or Office Depot. I'll have to look it up. But uh, one of them has a price match guarantee, basically. And I have brought in eBay and Amazon prices, particularly for cables and connectors and things like that. And the, the margin undercutting is tremendous. I mean, it's like it's something you would pay $20 for, you can get it for three and they'll happily give it to you. Uh, and it really makes you st to wonder, you know, about, wow, there's no, there's no loyalty there. I'm just doing sure. it purely out of convenience. So where is the love, well, Stephen? Yeah, to stop and <laughs> to, to talk about that for just a moment. Yeah. In my opinion, that's a dangerous practice for retailers. Mm -hmm. Agreed. I mean, because of their overhead, they're a brick and mortar store staples. Yep. You know, they, they've got to have locations where there's there's walk-in traffic and, um, you know, parking and all that kind of stuff. They have mm -hmm. so much more overhead than an e-commerce platform like right. like Amazon, eBay. You know, can they really afford to give up that margin? My, yeah, yeah I mean, it's kind of the no-brainer answer is not at all. Yeah. But it, and it is have very sales people. as you said regarding just how much margin there is in something like a, 
right. you know, a connector cable or USB cables or extension mm -hmm. cables, things like that. Three bucks, right. for, you know, is the cost or, or something they're making a, a tiny profit on, tiny right. margin, and they're selling for 20. You yeah, can I don't discount. feel too bad about that. <laughs> yeah, you can discount your way right out of business as a retailer by adopting that that practice. I don't yeah. know how many people. I have no way of knowing how many people or the percentage of people come in with with those and do that with that information that yeah. says, "Hey, yeah. you know, you said you'd match the price, and here it is." Right. I think it was an employee who told me that too. Uh, I probably brought something in on my phone saying, hey, look at this. This is, oh, well, we'll do that, you know. Oh, so it's not advertised in the store? It's no, just, oh. I, don't, I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think so. I've, I was trying to remember back. How did this happen? The last time was like two years ago. Yeah, that would be very smart of them to not advertise that mm -hmm. in the store. Right. You know, hanging signs will beat any price. Right. But it doesn't really create loyalty. No. doing that either right no that's it, the whole point of this of our broadcast right. today is that right. no there's no loyalty there it's actually a demonstration of the lack of loyalty which is the trend right. which is the, the the nosedive of the just the decline right people are they're going to coffee shops and they've got the little stamp card or punch card or whatever and you know buy six or ten and get your seventh or eleventh free or something like that and you'll see that with pizza places and that it's pointless. They're just cutting into their own margins and they're not really, they're not producing loyalty. It, it's just, it's, no, not a, it's not a key performance indicator, is it? No. And rewarding people, like you said, for like the number of trips or the number of visits in, that's really ineffective. There are ways to use loyalty programs more effectively where you give people points or credit or however mm -hmm. the program works for like the amount of money they spend or things like that, mm -hmm. you know, double the points on for certain things or like this, this story about the pudding guy, you know, he took advantage of that opportunity where they were doubling the, the amount of miles you got the frequent flyer miles. Mm -hmm. So there are, there are several other reasons why uh, customers stop doing business with a particular brand or, or company, um, which, illustrates this lack of loyalty mm -hmm. that we're talking about. So 42% will hit the eject button on a company or brand because they do not offer, the brand does not offer any live or real time customer service or support. And that's something we've talked about in previous broadcasts, social media. Mm -hmm. That is a great way to provide near real time responses to people who have legitimate questions. They want to know, can it do this or can it do that? And they'll make a buying decision immediately once they know that because they, they need to be informed. But so 42% say, sorry, moving on. You can't help me. I want help now. That's the way we're wired. 38% uh, leave and stop doing business with a brand because there's um, there's no timely sales or, or promotions. And that's something that people really like couponing that, <laughs> that sort of mindset, like, give me a deal. You know, I'm, I'm a, uh, I'm a loyal customer. I expect something. Give me, you know, give me something in return for my business. 41% uh, will switch brands if that brand increases their prices. So loyalty to a point and then mm -hmm. nope. You know, it, it costs too much or I can buy it. I can buy it for less money elsewhere and there's no loyalty there mm -hmm. for, for the reasons we talked about a moment ago. I mean, in my opinion, the money's better in my pocket than the corporation. I mean, I'm, they're they're If it's a not for profit, that's one thing. You're making a charitable contribution. That's a whole different story. If they are a business that is trying to make a profit, you know, it doesn't serve me or you or consumers anywhere well to pay more than you have to. Mm -hmm. So 38% of people will switch brands if a friend or family member recommends a different brand, which I think is really interesting because friends and family, they, they impact our, our thinking and our decision making. And if they're making a recommendation that says, hey, you know, I, I buy this over here and I get great service or I get a great price or whatever. 
the loyalty is gone instantaneously in the mind of the consumer. Like they just move on. Right now I switched uh, hosting at the end of last month and I had been with my previous host for like six years <laughs> and their customer internet, service was fine. Internet web hosting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Web hosting. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Um, I switched because of the recommendation of a friend who I trust. I also saved a lot of money. I basically got a year for free uh, when I, Can when I got it for three years. Yeah. So all the goodwill that the previous company built up is just gone. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, okay. It didn't matter anymore. Tough. <laughs> Plus, I didn't get the feeling that they were really on my side at, at the end there because I did have extensive talks with both companies. So they kind of did a little more to shoot themselves in the foot. <laughs> Interesting. So those are the those are the stats on reasons why customer service is in a I'm sorry, customer loyalty is in such a rapid decline. So one thing that we learned about this or one thing that this tells us is that trust is earned and loyalty is demonstrated. Hmm. By creating an atmosphere that makes customers happy, feel happy and welcome companies need to strive really hard to deliver the types of customer experiences, and we talk about this all the time, that lead to brand loyalty. You've got to have those exceptional customer experiences because brand loyalty is so fleeting, as we've just illustrated. Brand loyalty is fleeting for customers today, and long gone are the days, like you, you mentioned, where you, know, you go in and buy a sandwich, or frozen yogurt or whatever and get the punch card and the 10th time it's you get a free one. Well, you know, big deal. Right. No, and I want to I really want to point this out for our viewers that the the punch card loyalty system or reward system or whatever that that is so popular and you see this with smaller companies and there are businesses selling these kinds of systems, right? It's the wrong measure. It's the wrong place to put your focus. Good exceptional customer experience is the place, right? To, to make your gains here. The customer service experience, that's their customer experience, that's where to go. Absolutely. Presently in the United States, the average number of memberships to brand loyalty programs is, drum roll, 29 <laughs> memberships per household. Huh. Think about that. Okay, so we're seeing a problem already here. <laughs> yeah, so so right. 29 memberships per household, yet only 23% of consumers say they have a relationship with a brand. And there's a big Is disconnect. Loyalty? There's right. A, right, so they, they sign up for the program. They've got the, the loyalty card, mm -hmm. the frequent flyer card, the, you know, the punch card like you're talking about, but less than a quarter of the people feel like they have a relationship with, with any brand. That's very interesting to me. Yeah. So, I mean, let's compare that with Starbucks. Mm -hmm. Good customer experience, right? Very consistent, high end, high prices. And do their customers mind paying? Not at all. No, they don't even think about it. They so really they, don't. Whereas the, the lower end, you know, Skippy's coffee shop is struggling <laughs> so hard for that dollar, right? And and they're giving away their punch cards and that and cutting their prices and giving away free stuff, cutting into their margins. It's clearly not effective. The numbers are saying they're not effective. Humans will collect the membership. They will, they'll, they'll collect the loyalty program cards, right? But they will not feel that this creates loyalty. Yeah, and the people that I know, and I, I know this is a national trend, but people that I know personally who are Starbucks fans, they the price never even crosses their mind, and they are loyalists. And four bucks for a, a fancy coffee, five bucks, you figure that out over the course of the year. You know, they stop in on their way to work every mm -hmm. day and maybe go on the weekend. I mean, it's a lot of money. It adds up yeah. to 1200 bucks, something like that. Maybe yeah. more. Yeah. The point is there's no experience for people to, to come back again and again right. and again. I mean, Skippy's isn't creating the environment right. that Starbucks has that people want. People are not at, they're not at Starbucks just for the coffee. No, yeah. no, not at all. They're there for the environment. And 
the consistency from one to the next is, you know, it's what they're looking for. Right. So what are, <laughs> we have this notes here, dogs are loyal. <laughs> I really, think that's I mean, it's actually harsh, but yeah. I've dogs seen Dogs are loyal. <laughs> I've seen it said a number of times, you know, you want loyalty? Get a dog. Get a dog. Go to the, go rescue a dog. Go to the pound, rescue a dog, and you will have loyalty for, for 15 for years or whatever. Dog, yeah. or your life. Every but time you go the same outside, doesn't you're... sound like it could be said for consumers when it comes to brands, does it? No. No, not at all. When you think about a dog, you go outside to get the newspaper or check the mail or whatever, and the, <laughs> the dog is happy to see you and doesn't realize you've only been gone for 35 seconds. Right. That's loyalty. We consumers, we the people, we don't behave that way. So 77% of consumers are attracting their loyalty Retract. more quickly today than they did just three years ago. And that trend is not letting up. It's it's continuing. And back to the nosedive analogy, I mean, this, the decline is just another indicator that the decline of customer loyalty is it's bad. I find it interesting that 23% of the people felt that brand loyalty was a thing in their lives. They felt that they had a relationship, just 23%. 77% of consumers are taking back their loyalty. They're removing it, right? And that adds mm -hmm. up to 100%. That's interesting. I, I don't think those two things were connected quite that way, but it's an interesting way to divide the pie up, isn't it? That good three point. quarters of the people that. are going, no, loyalty means nothing to us, right? And only less than a quarter are saying, okay, yeah, this is a thing. That's really interesting. I hadn't thought mm -hmm. about that. You're right. It does add up to 100%. Mm -hmm. which is there's a, there's a. A tire math for me, Jason. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I can't do that in so my head. Let's, let's look at consumer behavior about what consumers think about loyalty programs. Do consumers think that loyalty programs improve their loyalty? They do think that's the case. Hmm. Interesting. So here's the difference between thought or belief and behavior. Exactly. I mean, they think that they're loyal, but they're really not. And I think something like 60% of consumers switch brands, Sorry. despite the belief in loyalty programs as a thing by consumers, they just happily go along and switch <laughs> whenever they want. Yeah, so 71% of, of consumers think that loyalty programs improve their loyalty, but 61% switch brands just within the last 12 months. So, right. so there's that disconnect again. And this time it's on the consumer side. It's not on the... Uh, it's not on the, the company or the brand side. side. So that's right. interesting. Back. Yep, and that's really what we're trying to highlight with this show is is... The difference is between the way people profess to believe, but then the way they go and, and actually behave. And to that point, companies and, and marketing people, you know, what they say they're doing and then what they actually do. They're mm -hmm. well intended, but they don't execute or they no, or some things are ineffective. Yes. Right. Like the punch card program. <laughs> yes. So, Better to go put your energy into creating a wow customer experience, right? Go buy right. a Tom Peters book and find out how to do that. And then, so although businesses want to create customer retention, that's what they want to accomplish here, right? Keep the customer. The stuff they're doing isn't really necessarily working unless they're focusing on customer experience. That's absolutely right. So we know that acquiring new customers is expensive. Like mm -hmm. Bain and Company is famous for their research that says it costs six to seven times more money to acquire a new customer than it is to keep an existing one. So in, in its crudest form, the idea is if you reward customers, they'll buy again and hopefully again and again. And, you know, most marketing professionals value the philosophy of customer mm -hmm. retention, but many of them still misunderstand how to drive it and how to cultivate it. Right. So here's some research that I think is absolutely fascinating. And I know that you all will too. Uh, this is from some very recent research from the end of last year uh, by a, a digital marketing firm called Kite Wheel. 73% of consumers said that loyalty programs are a way for brands to show appreciation for loyal customers. Let me say that again. So nearly three quarters of 
consumers said that loyalty programs are a way for brands to show appreciation to them for being a loyal customer. However, a staggering 66%, two thirds of marketers see customer loyalty programs as a way for the consumer to show loyalty to the brand. <laughs> wow. So there's huge, there's a huge flip going on here in, in perception, right? What, what are we doing this loyalty program for? What are the measures that we're getting from it? From the consumer side, it's like, well, okay, you're showing appreciation to us company, right? Mm -hmm. From the corporate marketer side, they're using it as a method to measure how consumers are showing their loyalty to the brand. It doesn't make so any again, sense. Ships passing in the night here. It doesn't right? make any sense yeah. whatsoever. Uh, I mean, this type of thinking shows a complete lack of understanding about consumers and their, their loyalty. And, you know, and, and 66%, I mean, that's a huge percentage of people in marketing to think that way. It's a dangerous way to think. And I want to make it really clear, if it hasn't dawned on you already, we consumers, we owe brands nothing, absolutely nothing. We have nothing to prove. We don't have to show them anything. It is incumbent on companies to woo us to, to buy their products and services. We don't owe them a thing. That's why I was letting you off the hook earlier about... Um, you know, getting research from Amazon, buying on eBay. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't owe Amazon anything. <laughs> right. So it's a, it's a very presumptuous way to think for marketing people to think that it's a way for consumers to show loyalty to the brand. It's just, it's really nonsensical. So what about happy customers giving good reviews? Well, you can't overstate the, the positive part of, brand advocacy you know when when happy customers are singing the praise from the rooftops about your your company and your brand and your the customer experience and they're telling friends and family and they're posting reviews online and stuff and that's wonderful that is brand advocacy and as we've said a number of times the the unsolicited testimony mm -hmm. to friends and family and displayed to strangers via online uh, reviews, that's wonderful. And that is the very best kind of marketing. We saw a statistic earlier. It was more than a third of, uh, of people switched brands because a friend or family member said something mm -hmm. positive about something else. So how can brands show that they're loyal to customers by using some sort of program? Clearly, it well, doesn't it work the other way around. I'm sorry, what was the last part? Clearly it doesn't work the other no, way around. It not work the other way around at all. It goes back to the delivering exceptional experiences. That's what it's all about. This allows brands to create like magic moments for customers. Okay. So what's an example of a magic moment? An example, okay, so imagine that you rent a car. You've reserved a, a rental car and you go to pick it up. And because you're a loyal customer, the the rental car company upgrades you hmm. to a luxury car or an SUV, you know, a couple a couple notches up from what you reserved. That produces or that creates delight in customers. And you're happy. You appreciate that you have been rewarded or that you've been recognized and that your business is is valued. That's a that's just off the top of my head. That's a magic moment. I mean, you can apply that to all sorts of businesses. I mean, restaurants, for example. I mean, if you order an appetizer and the the server comes over and tells you, not at the end of the experience, not when you're paying the check that, oh, we comped you. We decided to, to make the appetizer free. If you tell them right then, as you're delivering it to the table, the server or the 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 manager comes over right after it's okay. delivered to your table and says, you know, you're in here all the time. We appreciate your business and this appetizer is free. Hmm. Again, you're giving away something, but 
you're creating delight in the moment. So that magic moment happens and lasts throughout the meal. So you're there with your friend or family or spouse or whatever, and you're talking about it. It's like, well, that was really cool of them. And it just, you know, it makes you feel, right. you know, so much of this stuff is about feelings. Like we've talked yes. about this before. The I was going to talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and it's a hard mm-hmm. thing to measure. You know, you, we're not in the right. minds of our consumers, so we don't know how they feel, but the customer experience resides in their, in their mind. This is why subjective feedback is so important. It is. So, we talked so many times about this, like, this phrase makes me think of George C. Scott and uh, Patton, where he says, "All glory is fleeting. All loyalty is fleeting," <laughs> and it's it's feeling based, so it comes and goes, and it can be eliminated in a moment. And you just go shop around if prices rise above market rate, and there hasn't been an exceptional customer experience. And you go, well, whatever, I can get the same thing somewhere else for cheaper. Right. What about communication? Communication is is really important as long as you don't overdo it. Okay. You know, as long as it, speaking to what we talked about a bit earlier, like so many people hit the eject button on their loyalty programs because they get inundated with, with emails. But right. communicating in general is is – an excellent thing to do. And the the thing I advise is to set your loyalty program up in a way so that it makes it really, really easy for the your company to get feedback from your customers, which is called voice of customer. And I talk about that all the time and I'm a huge right. proponent and advocate of it and, uh, you know, a pro at, at implementing it and executing on it. If you can get that feedback, that is so necessary so that you understand what customers like, what they don't like, what they value, what they don't value, suggestions on how you can improve your product or service offerings, suggestions on how you can improve business processes to remove friction or struggle points um, that you didn't know existed unless you heard it from the customers. Like when we do this, this is the customer. So when we do this, I mean, it, it makes it hard to do business with you. So if you can ease that, you know, the ease of doing business and conducting business with you and you learn about that and you make those improvements and you're continually learning and implementing changes and optimizing your business and taking those suggestions seriously, you will learn and you will create exceptional customer experiences because you'll know what to provide. You'll know what they what they value and what they want and be, it makes it so much easier easier to deliver on that. So they don't hit the eject button because of of going back to the top of the show, the number one reason people leave is because the company doesn't meet the expectations of the consumer. So they, they leave and they go elsewhere back to the other things. There's so many other choices. Where we, yeah, exactly. And anybody who's watching, if, if you're watching and you want to find out more about voice of customer, Watch the previous episode before this one. Um, that's that's what we covered. So it's not enough to build a loyalty program. Sit back and go. Okay, we're done. Let's we're gonna build and guarantee customer retention now. It just doesn't work that way. I mean, as a mindset that's uh, that's very lazy. I would <laughs> I would say to think that just because you build it, they will come. Right. You have to keep delivering even in the instance or the example of the the rental car company and the upgrade they gave you that caused delight in the moment or created delight in the moment. That's a magic moment. But how long will it last? Uh So you you have a feeling of loyalty then. There's some affinity then while you're driving that car for the period that you rented it. You may continue to rent from them, although – like we like we know from the statistics that back this up, if their prices go above the market rate, mm-hmm. you will leave. Tendency is right. you will leave because it's not an exceptional customer experience. It was back when when you got the upgrade. Again, loyalty is very very fleeting. People are are fickle in many ways, and it's not a fault. I mean, not saying that it's a bad thing. Anything that 
that helps consumers is a good thing for consumers. You know, lower prices, more information so that you can make informed buying decisions. Those are good things. But we don't want to spend more than we have to. I mean, nobody wants to pay big bucks for something that they could have bought for less if everything else is equal. Like right. in Jason's example, he's a he's a photography buff and he's a quite good photographer. So he's loyal to certain camera bodies and lenses a certain brand but you know if you can get it for a, a $500 lens for $425 why would you spend the extra 500 I mean I'm sorry the extra 75 why would you spend the full $500 just an example off the top of my head it just doesn't make sense to right. knowingly pay more than you have to for the exact same thing right so it's it's more about my the, you know about the feelings and that it's more about money back. Like I get on one of my credit cards, big deal or points that can be redeemed. That is not a customer loyalty program, despite it, the, it's the not moniker a that's been put on it. program that is effective, right? The ones that are effective go back to the, how yeah. you make a customer feel. And here's what customers want. Here's what we like. Here's the trend that if you paid attention to this trend, you would have a lot more loyalty. And that is that we as customers want to be rewarded in the way of not that money back or the points accumulated, but we want preferential treatment. We want to be treated differently than a customer who isn't loyal. Right. We want to be valued. We want to be appreciated because we keep coming back and we keep buying. So we want something in the way of a different status in that preferential treatment. Right, not to be, oh, well, we've already got Steven's money. So yeah, let, him, let him continue to do what he's doing over there. And now let's go and try and get Jason's money. And we'll, we'll do something for Jason, but we don't, won't do anything for Steven, right? I, I see this on Amazon. You've got an example about this too, where uh, the new customers get a big discount Right. It infuriates me whenever I see it. I'm like, oh, thanks. You feel that you've got my money locked up. And so I don't matter. Right. That's that's how I end up feeling about it. Oh, big time. It really irks me. I've been a Verizon customer, a loyal customer of Verizon for over 15 years. And, you know, I could switch to Sprint. I used to be a Sprint customer. And I know all the, the cellular carriers do this. Mm -hmm. and that's, okay. You want a new iPhone? It's two hundred dollars less for a, a new customer a who signs a two-year contract. Right. And it's yeah. like, okay, what am I over here? Chopped liver. I've been with you for fifteen years, and I can't get that price. Mm -hmm. that, that I mean, that's not a loyalty program. That's just the no, way that that's you a do customer business. getting a, program. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, it it makes us mad. It makes us feel. Like we aren't appreciated in our business isn't appreciated. Right. So what's an example of a, a good customer reward program, I guess, or loyalty program? You say it's about feelings and preferential treatment. Yeah. Um, the one that comes to my mind for, for me personally off the top of my head is I've been an American Express card holder since I was 24 years old. So it was a long time. And the ability to buy concert tickets like three days before they're available to the general public is a huge thing for me. It's huge because for, for my entertainment dollar, rock concerts are, I mean, nothing beats a rock concert. I've been right. going to them since I was 11. Um, I go to many every year. I've traveled as far as from the Midwest to London for a single concert. So being able to buy those tickets, at face value, two or three days before they're available to the general public, I can pick the seats I want. I don't have to worry about the concert selling out because they often do when they're available to the general public. Concerts sell out sometimes in a couple of hours. So that's really cool. And the other thing, it gives me peace of mind that, you know, it's not going to sell out. So I don't have to go to the secondary market like StubHub and pay three times face value Right. So let's wrap up. Our purpose today on this episode of Future Now was to demonstrate that customer loyalty programs are usually totally misaimed 
<laughs> the, the companies don't really understand their purpose and what they're trying to get and measure out of them. Who is showing appreciation to whom <laughs> by these loyalty programs? That's confusing as well. Oh, I so say, show if, loyalty I mean, to your customers. Show right, or to your brand. To right. your customers. If you value them, which you should, because they keep the lights on and they pay for every other bill and, and overhead expense that you, you have, again, consumers owe brands nothing. Right. So if you want an effective customer loyalty program and to dig into more about voice of customer, talk to Stephen because he's an expert in this stuff and uh, he can get your company headed in the right direction. Thanks, Jason. So I'm Jason Canigan. That's Stephen Monaco. And that is another episode of Future Now. That is, uh, that's a wrap. We'll see you next week. All right. Thanks, Jason. You bet.